Hello, this is the Daily Encouragement Message prepared on a beautiful Monday morning, August 12th, 2024. We are Stephen and Brookseen Weber, a married couple, just celebrated our 48th anniversary this uh, last May, and our goal, we just prayed about it, in our marriage and ministry is to honor God. And we want to do that today in our teaching titled Godliness with Contentment, which is actually a phrase found in our daily text today. But let me make a personal note, first of all, to podcast listeners. Tomorrow, on the 13th, I am scheduled for surgery. And although Brooksine and I write and share these messages together, I do all the technical work, something she's just not really been that interested in learning. So we won't be able to post another message until I have sufficiently recovered. We have a note on our site today if you desire more information. Bible text today is from 1 Timothy 6, verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Yesterday I taught from 1 Timothy 6, 1 through 10 in our Crossroads Adult Bible Fellowship class, or as many churches still call it, Sunday School. This portion has a number of themes, but one of them is contentment. So we will consider that today. In the context of money, contentedness is being satisfied with what you have. But there is also a sense of contentedness in regard to the conditions in which we find ourselves in life. Contentment is a virtue that the majority of us have yet to consistently attain. And I, we have underlined that word consistently attain. Even when you have it, you may find it slips away easily. Today's brief text is easily memorized, and some of you probably have already memorized it. Godliness with contentment is great gain. And actually, a friend of ours, Mike Book, wrote a song based upon that text, and I think it it helps us in that regard as well. It is. It's an excellent aid. It really Mm -hmm. is. Just prior to this section, Paul addressed false teachers who supposed that godliness was a means of financial gain. I wonder who these teachers were in the context of that time period. However, in our own day, there are those who sure seem to be in it for the money. And for some, religion has paid off quite handsomely. Today's tiny verse is power-packed. Most view the experience of gain in life as having more money or possessions or both. But that is certainly not what the Apostle Paul is writing about. Consider the power of the phrase, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Paul is urging Timothy in the brief section that follows to consider genuine gain. Godliness is a greatly needed virtue in our time. God will always have a remnant who walks in a manner that honors and pleases him. Godliness indicates we will have a God-word attitude of reverence and respect. We will do that which is pleasing to God so that it becomes a way of life for the godly person. Earlier in this same letter, Paul wrote, Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness, for bodily discipline is only of little profit. But godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. That's 1 Timothy 4, 7, and 8. And it expresses the infinitely greater value of godliness over that of financial or material gain. As a result of this godliness, we have the inner peace of knowing that we are right with God. And whether we live or die, we belong to him. This godliness is profitable for all things, impacting us in both our present life and our future eternal life. Paul is simply presenting the two choices Jesus spoke of in Matthew 6, 24, where he said, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in wealth, end quote. Notice there are only two options that our Lord gives. You cannot choose both. Money is what you make it, a master or a servant. From the very beginning, Satan has tormented the human race with the deceptive lie, that which God has provided is never enough. His lie to Adam and Eve was their first temptation with deadly consequences. Essentially, by tempting them to partake of the tree of life, he told them that the breathtaking beauty in the garden was not enough, that human companionship was not enough, that God's provision was not enough, and that God's authority 
was meant to be questioned. Today we have a growing alert toward more wealth and possessions, which we've been told will make us happy. But contentment is not the fulfillment of what you want, which will always be changing, but the realization of how much you already have and finding satisfaction with that. It's realizing and acknowledging that all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. And that's from the great (laughs) song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Pastor Steve Coles of the Flagstaff Christian Fellowship. It's a church that Stephen visited years ago in Arizona during a chaplain's conference. And this is what he wrote. God has called his people to a life marked by contentment. Contentment comes from having the right priority, godliness, not gain, and the right perspective, the eternal, not the temporal. Jim Elliott, who was martyred at 28, wisely wrote in his journal when he was a 22-year-old college student, and I quote, and many of you know this, and some of you have even memorized it, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose, end quote. You can't keep the things of this world. You can't lose the promises of God regarding eternity. Order your life in line with that truth, and you will know God's contentment. And that is the end of Steve Cole's quote here. So my final challenge before Brooksine's prayer is, may God give us all a resolve to be content, thereby attaining, attaining great gain. Let's pray. Father, when I get overly anxious about having the latest gadget or the newest fashion or whatever's popular at the time, I usually overlook the fact that I have so much already at my disposal. So much, in fact, that I struggle to properly manage my possessions and can be overwhelmed even with clutter. We thank you for those who model contentment by living with less so that others can have more, more of the basics of life and the provisions needed to reach others with the gospel message. Contentment from you cannot be packaged and sold, but it can be a way of life as we align our priorities in accordance to your will. Teach us the great gain we experience by setting our heart's affections, not on this world's changing and peril-stricken economy, but by storing up treasures in heaven's economy, Mm -hmm. where eternal riches never perish, spoil, or fade. May that precious truth help us find contentment in a non-content society. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brooksine. And uh, we have chaplaincy ministry we need to leave for this morning. Uh, and we are, she's going to step out as I wrap up the message and uh, try to get this up to the web. I do have a note regarding the type of surgery. It's in a hernia repair, abdominal hernia, from many years ago, and you can read a little bit more about that if you're interested. A couple songs today, one I referred to by our friend Mike Book called Godliness with Contentment. It's a great way to memorize that song. We, I think, had probably already memorized it when he wrote it back maybe 20 years ago. But uh, we still, uh, I still find it helpful every time I consider this verse. I think of Mike's song. And then a song that both blessed of us, yes, both we were both blessed by yesterday in a church service called Crowns Down. We have a link to a YouTube video. And I had a lengthy footnote section on the message today because I basically follow up on some of the teaching. This is also prepared with my our Crossroads class members in mind as a follow-up. So uh, if you're interested, and I, one I want to highlight is an outstanding sermon Nick, a friend of ours, sent uh, titled Waking Up in a Woke World by a pastor, Willie Rice, from Clearwater, Florida. He was at a camp meeting in Lancaster County last week, and uh, I have a link to the video queued to the beginning where his message begins. This man fires truth from both barrels. Now, obviously, you get to the link from our site, and you need to be prepared. It's a, probably a 30, 45-minute sermon. It's very thoughtful, though. Well, we have some other notes and then photos for a weekend, which included a bike ride with our class members, uh, the Warwick to Effort to Rail Trail, and just share a little bit about that and some photos, a beautiful section where we live. I had a couple photos from a visit yesterday to the old windmill farm to see our friends Jesse and Anna Ruth. It was closed, but uh, we got to see the new colt that Brooksine 
was able to name. So she's really excited about that. Snickers. Well, thank you for joining us for this daily encouragement. And likely, as I mentioned earlier, because my surgery, the uh, won't be posting or preparing messages. I don't know how long my recovery will take, but uh, definitely the next several days anyway. Well, thank you again for joining us this Monday morning, at least when we prepare it. I don't know when you'll be listening to it. It could be any time today or on through the rest of uh, life because we keep these archived messages. Messages for Monday, August 12th, 2024. Our website is dailyencouragement.net. And today's message, Godliness with Contentment.